So, I am just going to state this lemma and this is called Chernoff bound. Okay, so this let me state this let. Can you all read this? So, it is just saying that, okay, let be x i be a sequence of i d random variables, where each one is Bernoulli distributed with parameter mu. And let mu hat denote the estimates using t samples, okay. Then we are going to say that, then take any epsilon which is between 0 to 1 minus mu, then it is saying that. The estimate, the sample mean mu hat being larger than mu plus epsilon is upper bounded by minus t divergence between mu plus epsilon and mu. So, now just let uh, mu, let us say what is my parameter epsilon range 0 to 1 minus mu. So, when epsilon is 0, this guy is simply mu and when epsilon is largest like 1 minus mu this guy is going to take value 0, 
Okay, so this uh, mu plus epsilon is no, never going to be larger than mu here in this case. And similarly, when epsilon is between 0 and mu, we can argue that the mu hat being less than or equals to mu plus epsilon is exponential minus t again the divergence between mu plus epsilon and mu. We will not go, uh, yeah, so, so, yeah, it should be mu minus epsilon. And also, this is mu minus epsilon. Maybe that is, uh, I do not know, it is all clearly visible. Let me just write it again here. So, what we are just saying is for epsilon between 0 to 1 minus mu, we are just saying that. 0 to 1 minus mu, we are just saying the probability that mu hat greater than mu equals to epsilon is upper bounded by dxp minus t divergence of mu plus epsilon and mu. Okay, first thing. Is this bound, this concentration bound we have, is it any better than what we had then uh, using my Hoffding's inequality? What was the bound we had in Hoffding's inequality? So, this bound we have dxp minus t So, now if you are just going to apply the pin square inequality what we have on this divergence, this divergence is lower bounded by 2 delta k in this case is going to be epsilon, right, mu and mu plus epsilon. So, this is going to be, I have a lower bound on this, but this is with a minus sign here. So, I am going to get So, you see that like the, if you have, if I can restrict myself to Bernoulli re rewards, then I have a deviation bound, which is slightly better than what I would have got uh, using my Hofding's inequality. So, the KLUCB exactly exploit this and uh, that is why it is going, it is able to give all the bounds in terms of the divergence. and. Uh, this happen, then they happen to be tighter than what we have the UCB bounds. So, let us quickly uh, go through the proof of this one. Uh, okay, this is, uh, it will be a good exercise like for us to just uh, repeat some part what we have already done in the last class, uh, not last class, the class before that. So, what we have? We have probability that mu hat being greater than or equals to mu plus epsilon. So, what I will do is, I will just unravel this quantity and uh, this is like uh, x t, t equals to 1 to capital T, then mu and this is going to be, I want this to be larger than n epsilon, right. I have just multiplied this, uh, the denominator t, I have taken it on the other side. And also, let us multiply both sides by some lambda positive. This is what we had done in the last class also and then exponentiate both sides. It will, if I do that, it will not change my probabilities. So, is this manipulation correct? What I have done here is simply I have substituted the value of mu hat, which is nothing but this sample mean divided by t, but I took t on the other side. Uh, 
right so just let me check this mm. yeah this should be xt minus mu on the whole thing so then i just multiplied this thing by lambda yeah lambda greater than 0 and then i exponented both sides now we i am going to use our usual bound what was that like the marker inequality so what i'll get if i apply my marker inequality the marker inequality give me exp lambda that c xt minus mu this whole divided by exp minus lambda t epsilon now this is exponential of this sum and what is our assumption this x t's are iid sequence so this expectation of this exponential sum can i write it as product of expectation of this exponential terms now i'm going to expand this what is this expectation this expectation is about i know that this xt is going to be 1 with probability mu and this is going to be 0 with probability 1 minus mu so if i just do that this is going to be exp so this is with probability mu with exp lambda 1 minus mu and with probability 1 minus mu this is going to be exp minus lambda mu and then we have this exp minus lambda t epsilon so what is this going to give now you notice that this term here within the square brackets now they are the same for every capital t every t going from 1 to capital t so this is now going to be simply mu times exp 1 minus mu into lambda plus 1 minus mu exp minus mu lambda times and then there is also 1 t but I am just going to uh, what I will do is uh, so there are capital T time so if this lambda e I can assume that uh, this is have been added capital T times and then I can take each lambda E inside so this is going to contribute lambda E here and also minus lambda E here and then this entire thing is raised to the power capital T. now this is a function of lambda and this holds for any lambda positive right now what i can do i can look for a lambda that minimizes 
this quantity. So now you can just uh, look at this quantity and uh, you can just differentiate and see that if you are going to set lambda to be log of mu plus epsilon 1 minus mu times I am just writing it this is the one that is going to give you that is going to minimize this exponent. And then once you are going to plug in this you are going to get So once you are going to get this, I am skipping the details like you can now when you plug in this quantity and then simplify you can get it this quantity to be upper bounded by mu plus mu plus epsilon So here I have written inequality but this is not equality right this is inequality here this is the Markov inequality here. So when I plug in this quantity here what I am going to get is 1 plus mu plus epsilon 1 minus mu into mu plus 1 minus mu epsilon to the power yeah, this power is 1 upon mu minus epsilon and this whole power to power t. So I have just what I have just done is I just lambda this quantity I have plugged in this and just simplified then I'm just going to get this. Now you can again go back and notice that this quantity here is nothing but the divergence. between mu plus epsilon and mu and this is what we wanted to show. So I have just skipped this like whatever this bound we have you can just uh, again manipulate it and write it as divergence between mu plus epsilon and mu. So you know the formula for divergence between mu plus epsilon and mu right just go and see that that could can be expressed in this form. So that is why and uh, this is what we had made a claim ok fine and similarly for uh, and make sure that for the choice of epsilon if epsilon happens to be in this range it is going to be less than 1 minus mu here that means this quantity here 1 minus mu minus epsilon is going to be non negative already. So, so every quantity here is a positive quantity and uh, you could write this. And now similarly for this case you can again show that when epsilon happens to be between 0 and mu you can come up with a similar one ok fine. So, I just want to stop this uh, discussion about KLUCB at this point here. So what we have just discussed about KLUCB is we have given the algorithm and we have just discussed that it is based on this tighter concentration bounds and this con tighter concentration bound is happening because we are using only Bernoulli distributions there. And now once we have this bound then uh, in the analysis we, we can expect that if you are using this bound divergence will come and we have we have stated now already that the expected number of pulls upper bound is coming in terms of this divergence and this happens to be a tighter bound than what we have for the UCB. So, but you need to note one point here is that in the case so what was the primary difference between UCB and KLUCB? the way we are choosing the index right. So let us rewrite this. So the index in the case of UCB was mu hat plus some alpha log t by number of pulls. So this is let us say for arm i. This is for UCB whereas for KLUCB 
what is this? This is max over q belongs to my range and uh, what was this? And I wanted to see n of a, this is for i, let us say i t minus 1 divergence between in my t minus 1 comma q and this is less than or equals to so earlier finding the index of arm i is just doing this now to find an index of arm you are basically trying to see if solve a optimization problem that right? is an optimization problem right you are trying to find a q which maximize, which is the one which is uh, satisfying this condition. And for Q, I already discussed for Q which are larger than this quantity, that is where this condition is going to be violated because this quantity is going to be increasing in Q, sorry, this, uh, this quantity is an increasing function for Q larger than this term. So, so, we have seen that for q greater than or equal s i t minus 1 divided by n i t minus 1, this guy is an increasing quantity. When x q equals to exactly this, this is 0, but if you increase q beyond this, it is increasing. So, we know that at some point, if you keep on increasing, it has to violate this condition and the point right away at it violates that is the maximizer. So, but so in general like if you just want to implement it a plain optimization problem, it could be pretty computationally in, intensive. So, when you are doing it in the code you have to be careful like if you just write this it is going to take a lot of time to run. So, you need to exploit the fact that this guy here is increasing in q and see at what point it is going to be violated and then find the index based on that. So, this actually this is like for a given p, if you look at it as a function of q, it is a convex function. Okay, so, let us say it is a convex function. If it is a convex function, you can always try to see at what point it is going to cross violate this condition, but uh, you should not just plainly uh, you call some module which implements the convex optimization and tries to find a uh, q here. If you just to give it to some uh, module which is finding uses convex optimization methods, it could take quite some time to solve this. So, try to exploit the monotonicity property of this uh, divergence and based on that quickly try to find out this q quickly. If you do that, you should be able to uh, reduce your runtime of the algorithm significantly. If you are just going to use some uh, convex optimization module to run this, it could take a quite some time. At q equals to 1? 1 minus p, so I am not following, where it blows up? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, q equals to 1, but no, like every arm, why should you, so, so t is changing in every round, right, and this is also increasing function as you increase uh, q. So, at some point, it should be exceeding this. So, that is the point. So, yeah, that whatever is the maximizer that is we are going to call it as an index of that arm, right. So, this is like q star is the arg max, let us say, which is uh, that value, that is the index for me. If it is uh, increasing it, right. Yeah, it will be increasing for uh, like, okay, this since this is fixed, if you are going to increase in q it is an increasing function. So, fine like yeah you can write like 
exactly at what point, but uh, we can just write less than or equals to till this point, okay. So maybe uh, even if you want to just uh, find okay exactly what is the q that is going to exactly equals to this, that is like a finding a zero crossing of a function, right? Even that could take uh, quite some time, or maybe like maybe if just see if you can uh, use that property to quickly figure out what is this q. So all I'm saying is try to find a good way to implement this. Like uh, it could uh, it it could take some time. Just to use the monotonicity properties. May, maybe like you can just so equate it to 0 and find a 0 crossing if that gives you faster uh, q value. Or you can just uh, do a kind of a search, yeah, you can uh, just uh, rapidly increase your q and see if it crosses then uh, bring down your step size, okay. So I think even if you are just going to call a 0 function that is, uh, it will maybe do similar thing. but. Uh, that module can be, if you see, if you can fasten it somehow by your own method. Yeah, yeah. Even then, uh, you are going to increase. Yes. Algorithm might find a Q which is on the other side. Yeah. Right, right that could possibly happen right so so what is saying is uh, so let's say this is my that uh, ratio let me call this as simply mu hat mu i hat at that time this ratio that is the so mu i hat so i will have something like this at as q goes and uh, this uh, upper bound is a constant let's say this is my log t plus log log t whatever it is so the way at point, the point at which it is violating maybe beyond this point or beyond this point. So which one you are going to choose? Take the upper, point. upper point. So that's why like just, uh, uh, so that why not the lower point also? Maximize yeah, you are just maximizing over uh, all the points. So you just know already you have to take the lower point. So just. Uh, focus on this part yeah yeah so another one thing like uh, if you know if you just uh, don't exploit this property and uh, then just see okay and give the constraint like okay this is my constraint i want to keep it below this and look for the maximum value of this function it is going to find this extrema but if you just uh, call a standard uh, optimization model it could take a uh, quite some time to do this but now you know the property you have to just like you, are, you you don't worry about this, you are increasing and just want to see where you are going to cross that point. Just quickly find it out. Yeah, yeah, so yes, you need to like keep that uh, tolerance very small. Yeah, so otherwise, uh, I mean don't even, if, don't go for arbitrarily small and also don't keep it too large. It is not specified. That is a that is we leave you to your judgment. What should be a good value? Okay. So if you are going to choose it very small, right? Even then you have to do too many halvings, and it is going to take a too much time. If you keep it the tolerance very large, you will quickly find it, but it may be pretty off. It may just end up uh, here. Okay. Okay, fine. So I want to just quickly discuss this Thomson sampling. And we will not go any much details into its algorithm. So there is another algorithm called Thomson sampling, which is based on Bayesian approach. What does that mean? It assumes that the parameter. So when I say environment, it is nothing but a set of parameters, right, which are defining the means of that distribution. It assumes that those parameters is itself drawn from some distributions and it is going to assume some prior on that and based on your observation it keeps on updating that prior and then draws parameters from that prior and then looks for the parameter which has the highest value. So I am just going to quickly write the algorithm and we will discuss it.
so all of you know what beta distribution what is a beta distribution so beta distribution with parameter alpha and beta has a pdf which is as following yeah x to the power alpha minus 1 so okay beta distribution with parameters alpha and beta so this is a pdf of a beta bit distribution with parameter alpha and beta has a distribution which is given by x to the power alpha minus 1 and 1 minus x to the power beta minus 1 So you understand this notation, gamma function. All of you know what is a gamma function. So it is, and it is a proper uh, PDF and uh, defined for all x. Uh, uh, what is that? X between zero one. Okay. So the Thomson sampling uses this beta distribution. What it is going to assume is. Okay, just first me write it, then we'll discuss it. Uh, for each i equals to no, for each. So this is a simple version I have defined here for the case of Bernoulli reward distributions. Okay, what it is doing is for every time it keeps a track of how many ones or are zeros I observed from a particular distribution. So ones corresponds to success, zeros corresponds to failure. So then it what it is going to assign a beta distribution for each i with a parameter. S i plus 1, F i plus 1. What is this? This is a num S i corresponds to number of failures and F i corresponds, sorry, S i corresponds to number of successes, number of ones it has observed, F i corresponds to number of zeros or number of failures. And now it is going to pull an uh, uh, observe a sample from that beta distribution and then it is going to say which is the one which has the highest value of the sample. 
and then it is going to play that and if it observes one it updates the success of that arm by one otherwise it updates the failure of that arm by one so what it is basically doing is it is going to assign priors to each arm through this beta distributions and every time it is going to update update those priors based on the success and the failures i'm going to assign observe for those arms and then it just repeats this process every time playing the arm which gives me the highest sampled reward from each of these beta distributions 